Good afternoon once again all my comic collecting friends out there in YouTube land. This is Comic Quarter 410. Here to do part 7 of my comic book keys variants and such. And to start off, I have a very sharp copy here. Uh, very sharp. Com uh, copy of Comico Primer number 2. And this is the first appearance of Matt Wagner's Grendel. And I'm a big Matt Wagner fan. Very happy to get this book. Um, as you can see, it's a black cover and it's very sharp. It has one very minor flaw, and that's it. If I can even get it, for you. you can barely see it. Barely see a tiny, tiny, tiny ding that almost starts to break color there at the bottom. But that's it. This copy is beautiful. I'm very happy to have that one. Next up is Marvel Superhero Contest of Champions. And this three issue mini made a big impression on me. I read it when I was believe I believe I was about seven years old. And I believe this also came out uh, around the time of the Olympics and that's what inspired this contest. And um, it, it, it was the first big event that I remember Marvel or DC doing and it made an impression on me. And basically what happened is um, the Grandmaster's brother, the Collector, gets captured by an unknown entity, and this entity wants to have a game or a contest with the Grandmaster on a cosmic scale to decide the fate of his brother, the Collector. So they kidnap all the Marvel Universe superheroes, and they pick teams, and they face off. And it made a big impression on me. Um, it was supposed to be a, a big, oversized one-shot or treasury, and they broke it down into three issues, which made the first issue... Uh, devoid of any action or story is basically them collecting all these heroes, but nonetheless it was cool And that's an awesome John Romita jr. Cover Here's number two and They like I said it would coincide with the Olympics So they wanted to introduce all these characters from different countries and to me It was my intro of Captain Britain up there in the corner right below him. They introduced uh, Arabian Knight over here on the right is Talisman. He was um, an Aborigine. Underneath him was Sabra, and she was Jewish. Uh, bottom left, I think that guy was called Defensor. He didn't last long. He was from Spain. Um, Dark Star, she's Russian. Sunfire's Japanese. Um, they had they had uh, an Irish girl named Shamrock. So they they were kind of going with that theme because of the Olympics of you know a hero from every nation competing in this and um there's contest of champions number three the final issue and i enjoyed that a lot of people didn't like it i really did this is dark horse's relaunch of creepy and i think they've done a really good job um relaunching creepy and eerie and i really like this cover as well because it's by eric powell the creator of goon and he also did i pulled out number two because it's another eric powell cover Eric Powell cover, excuse me, that I really, really like. It's an awesome cover. I recommend picking up uh, both Creepy and Eerie for anyone who likes horror books. Um, this is my Crisis on Infinite Earths, number one, signed by George Perez. And this is a really... I mean, near mint, super sharp, sorry about the glare there, but a super sharp copy of Caliber's Crow number two. I have Caliber Presents number one. It's the first appearance of the Crow, but I need to get the Crow number one, three, and four. And this copy is nearly flawless. You can't really see it. There's a tiny, tiny bit of rubbing, minute rubbing on that corner. Other than that, another gorgeous, sharp, sharp copy. And, uh... Just like the Comico, when they have an all-black cover like that, I'm really happy when I can find a high-grade copy that doesn't have many flaws on the cover. Um, this is Crypt of Dawn number one, and all the Cry for Dawn stuff was really hot in the 90s. Believe it or not, um, my Cry for Dawn books are one of the very few things I parted with. I don't sell much, but I sold them because a the guy at my shop made me a good offer on them. And um, I even had a signed... Uh, and numbered, it was a Cry for Dawn trade paperback preview that I got at one of the shows, and it was uh, 
I think it was limited to like 500 or 1,000 copies, and I threw that in, but the guy bought, I had like one through six in that, and he gave me such a good deal on them, I couldn't pass it up, and it was in the late 90s when these books were hot, and believe it or not, I could replace those books for a lot less than, than what I sold them for, so I'm not unhappy about that, but I don't think I only have Cry for Dawn like three and four now, so, but I have all the Crypt of Dawn, this was the second series, and this is number one. And I also have, I think this is called the Look Sharp variant to Crypt of Dawn number one, again by Joseph Michael Linsner. And it has this on the back. The certificate says, This book, Crypt of Dawn number one limited, has no certificate because you, the dear reader, are cooler than that. Joseph Michael Linsner. So it's a pretty cool variant. Had that since the 90s. Um, this is Dawn number one, and Drama and Dawn were like the first color versions of Dawn, and they came out when Cry for Dawn was at its the pinnacle of its popularity. And so I, I could be wrong. I haven't checked the prices on these in a long time. I don't think they're worth very much because it was very popular and they printed a lot in comparison to the Cry for Dawn books. Um, here we have Danger Girl number one by J. Scott Campbell and it was on his cliffhanger image imprint <clears throat> All right, I'm going to show this real quick I've showed this before this is my ooh, sorry about that glare this is my Daredevil 131 and I got it CGC'd at a 9.2 with off white to white pages and it's the first appearance of Bullseye very happy to have that book um, right behind it is, this is my 30 cent test cover price variant to Daredevil 132, and this is the second appearance of Bullseye. This is my 30 cent price variant to Daredevil 135, with the Jester, who I'm not a big fan of, and the 30 cent price variant to Daredevil 136, also with the Jester. Uh, this is probably my favorite single Daredevil story, Daredevil 181. Uh, this is a, a double size, I almost a giant size, but a special double size, and it was uh, a dollar in 82, so I believe books were 50 or 60 cents then. And I remember buying this one, because my mom said, I'll get you one comic, so I picked the, <laughs> the one that was double size. She's like, you're crafty, but I remember reading this till the cover fell off, so... I uh, bought a bought a near mint copy of it. Love that story. Frank Miller at his finest. Whoa, don't fall. All right, this is Daredevil 183, and it's uh, cameo the Punisher. And this is 184, part two of the Punisher crossover, and this is Daredevil number 200 classic John Byrne and Terry Austin cover on this one. Love that cover. And here we have Daredevil 249. This isn't a near mint copy. I'd give this a very fine. Um, it's got a couple breaks on the spine, but this is a cameo. It says versus Wolverine, but I don't, I don't remember if they really fought at all, but cool cover. By Rick Leonardi. Okay, moving on here. This is um, Marvel Knights Daredevil number one uh, by Kevin Smith and Joe Casada. Classic cover there. This is Daredevil Marvel Knights Daredevil number seven, and that's the Death of Mysterio. This is. Marvel Knights Daredevil number 9. This is the first appearance of Echo, who I think later went on to become uh, Ronin for a while when Hawkeye wasn't Ronin. This is Daredevil number 100, and this is the Michael Turner variant. Beautiful cover. This is the other variant to Daredevil uh, number 100, and this is the Marco Dergevic Dur cover always mispronounce uh, his last name 
Not even sure if that's right. It's either Jerjevic or Derjevic. But either way, beautiful cover. He does some great work. This is the Terry Dodson variant to Daredevil 111. First appearance of Lady Bullseye. And this is the more limited, I don't know if this is a 1 in 25, 1 in 50, whatever it was, but this is the more limited variant to Daredevil number 111, done by David Aha, who's very popular from his work on Hawkeye now. Great cover. This is uh, from Z the Zombie Month, where they did the variants to... Um, the zombie variants to all the normal books, sorry. And this is the Daredevil 112 zombie cover. Which is pretty cool. He's got, you know, instead of a whip, he's got a bones connected by a tendon there. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. This is the Daredevil 500 uh, Marvel 70th Anniversary variant by Oliver Koipel. This, I don't know if this is Assad Ribic or Marco Djurjevic again. I'll have to look this up. This is a gorgeous painted variant to uh, Daredevil number 500. This I just pulled out because um, I love this cover. It's by Paula Rivera and a Japanese themed cover. I really like Paula Rivera's work on uh, Daredevil with Mark Wade and Marcos Martin as well. Speaking of which, here is uh, Mark Wade's Daredevil number one and I got it signed this year by Mark Wade. This is Mark Wade's Daredevil number two. Gorgeous Paulo Rivera cover of Daredevil and Cap. Love that freaking cover. Sorry about the glare. Mark Wade was also nice enough to sign that one for me. Um, this is Daredevil number 21, and this is an appearance, this is technically the first appearance of Superior Spider-Man, it predates Superior Spider-Man number one, and Mark Wade and Chris Samney both signed that one for me this year, both very, very, very nice guys. This is a weird book, um, it's Canadian, I believe, and it was published by Fantico Enterprises, and it's a Daredevil Chronicles. But it has a really awesome Frank Miller cover. And uh, I hadn't seen it anywhere else because I guess maybe because I don't live in Canada. So I picked it up when I saw it. I don't, don't really know if it's uh, worth anything or not. This is one of the many great collaborations between Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. And uh, I've been recommending to Hippies Collectibles. Uh, he picked up Batman The Long Halloween recently and he said he's enjoying it. And... There's just so much great work that Loeb and Sale have done together. Um, you know, Long Halloween, uh, the follow-up, uh, Dark Victory. Superman for All Seasons is one of my favorite Superman stories ever and a must-read for any comic book fan. Um, I also recommended the Batman Haunted Night Trade, which is a collection of all Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale's uh, Batman Halloween specials, and it's fantastic. And then he did all these books for Marvel. They did um, Spider-Man Blue, Captain America White, Hulk Gray, and this one, Daredevil Yellow. Um, I think it's a six or eight issue mini. And it's you know tells the early days, the origin and early days of Daredevil. Really, really nicely done. Highly recommend their stuff. Um, this is the Guide to Dark Horse Comics, the concrete cover by Paul Chadwick. And... Um, Dark Horse owner, creator, whatever, CEO, editor-in-chief, Charles Rosansky. He signed it. So the head honcho over there. This is Dark Horse Comics number one. Awesome Dave Dorman Predator cover. And Dark Horse Comics number two, a, a Mike Mignola Robocop cover. Doesn't that kick ass? Um, okay, moving along here, this is Dark Horse Comics number 7, and this is the first uh, Star Wars story in any Dark Horse book, so that's pretty cool. 
This is Dark Horse Presents number 11, and it's the second appearance of Mask. But as you can see, they spell it with a Q there. But it says second appearance. Don't have his first. That's number 10. This is um, Dark Horse Presents number 51. And this starts off the Sin City uh, stories in Dark Horse Presents, but it's actually the second Sin City because uh, I believe it was the Dark Horse Presents or Dark Horse Comics 5th Anniversary Special had the first story. So this is technically the second Sin City in Dark Horse, but this is the first part of the the own whatever it was, eight-part story here with Marv. So first in Dark Horse, you know, first in the storyline, but it's not the very first appearance technically if that makes any sense this is uh, kind of a rough copy of DC Comics presents annual number two and uh, this is the introduction of Superwoman and an awesome Gil Kane cover kicks ass um, this is DC first issue special and uh, first appearance of Atlas by Jack Kirby didn't go over too well but a cool cover this is DC first issue special number two, and this is the first appearance of the green team, which they tried to relaunch recent, recently very, very unsuccessfully. I think that book lasted like three or four issues where they canceled it. Uh, this is DC first issue special number eight, and this is the first appearance of one of my favorite DC characters, Mike Grell's Warlord. And this is a very, very sharp copy, and I got an amazing deal on this book. I think I got this book for like $14. And it's an awesome copy. Um, this is DC First Issue Special number 12, and it's the first appearance of the Blue Starman. I'm forgetting his name, but first appearance of the new Starman. Um, DC First Issue Special number 13. This is the... Um, Return of the New Gods and, you know, Orion's new costume. Pretty cool issue. This is, um, it's two-sided, I believe. And, uh, it's the Darkness Zero and Witchblade number 10 by Top Cow. And I believe it's a flip book. This is the Darkness number 1. And this is the black cover variant by Mark Silvestri. Awesome copy, too. Um, these are the variants to uh, the first Dark Tower series by Stephen King. I did not buy the 1 in 75 J. Lee sketch variants. Um, my store gave me a pretty good deal on these. So this is the variant to number 1. It's Joe Casada cover there. Um, this is number two, the variant to Gunslinger Born number two. And it's a David Finch variant. This is the variant to Dark Tower Gunslinger Born number three, and it's by Linnell Francis Yu. Yeah, these are all the one in 25s, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get this one wrong. No, it is McNiven, okay. Um, this is the variant to Dark Tower number four. Steve McNiven, obviously. Gorgeous cover. I think this is Greg. Yep, this is Greg Land. This is the variant to number five by Greg Land. Another beauty. Love that cover. This is the Dark Tower number six variant by J. Scott Campbell. Another beautiful cover. And this is the variant to Dark Tower number seven. I believe this is Oliver Kuipel again. Yep, Oliver down at the bottom. Like that layout with the clouds on that cover. And to close things out, this is a copy of Dazzler number one. Gorgeous Bob Larkin painted cover. Just a, a staple of the 80s, in her and her disco costume. Not a very valuable book, but a cool one in my opinion. So, thank you all for checking out my video. I appreciate you taking the time as always. Um, everyone take care of yourselves, take care of your families, and happy comic book reading.